Hey everybody, it's question time again. Somebody sent me a fantastic question that I felt like I had to answer, but I felt like it was a great uh, topic video. And I'm sorry I can't pronounce the name of this person, so I'm just gonna put it below. Um, but the question is, often in your reviews there are subtle, fleeting mentions of how a particular movie helped you deal with a particular situation in your life. One gets the impression that you've gone through highs and lows, so how do you deal with it and how much does art help you? Also, if you can name one movie that changes your life the most, which would it be? So yeah, that's several questions, but um, they're very loaded and I have a lot of um, opinions in it and I have a strong connection to it. I believe often that the things that we're really passionate about and the things that we love, if we love it enough, most of the time they're double-edged swords because you know, like uh, for me, uh, a big passion of mine growing up was film, obviously. And uh, yeah, that was a great source of inspiration and creativity and, and personal enlightenment for me a lot of times, but it was also the source of my greatest weaknesses in a way. In a lot of ways, it hindered me from being uh, a better person. And so because of that, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with film and art in general. And I mean, hate is a strong word, but I mean, you get the idea. I think you understand what I mean by that. Art really represents a vul very vulnerable um, part of who we are as people. And I think when you really understand that, it starts to kind of cover up the full aspects of who you are, which includes your flaws. You know, I've been through a lot of highs and lows, but who hasn't? I mean, everybody has their problems, everybody has their struggles in life, and everybody has their great moments. Um, but for me growing up, I, I feel like movies, I discovered I love movies at a very young age. It's like people always ask me, you know, what was the first movie experience you ever had? Do you remember uh, your first time going to a movie theater? No, I don't at all. And to me, movies were like air. I, you know, I don't remember drawing my first breath and I don't remember watching my first movie. It, it just, it's always been kind of a part of who I am and I just grew up with it. And while I did love movies so much, I mean, I was absolutely obsessed with them and I didn't really understand why, it also distorted my perceptions of what is real and what is fantasy. Growing up, I was a very artistic, very perceptive child, very, very introverted, didn't play well with others. And I was just always, the world and people around me just didn't interest me at all. I just, my head was always, in the clouds. I was absolutely fixated on anything artistic and anything that involved pop culture. Anything that allowed me to kind of crack the surface of this reality and like this societal mask that we wear um, to try to get to something maybe deeper. Trying to get into the imagination, the inner workings of people and what's going on underneath was, I think, even if I, even though I didn't know it as a child, I think that's always what I've strived for. And that's why, as people, at least I think that most people could agree, is why we get into stories, why we get into characters. And that's because we, like when we watch a movie or we read a book or see a play, we're just seeing versions of ourselves. Uh, up on the screen or, you know, on the pages of a book that we can relate to and live vicariously through. In a way, it can help you learn about yourself and about other people, but it can also be an escape for you. And in my case, it was more often a mis uh, an escape than anything else. But the problem a lot of times in movies in particular, or just pop culture in America, is that America is so uh, fixated with this superficiality, this glossy exterior, this idea that uh, everything has to be perfection. So when I was a child, I'd, I'd watch these Hollywood movies with these gorgeous, skinny, young actresses, and I think, well, I have to look like that. I have to, or else, you know, I will never become anything. No one will ever notice me. I just, I was obsessed with that idea. And I would think, you know, it, I, I was a dancer too, but I thought, well, you know, unless I can dance like Fred Astaire, what's the point? And I also liked to sing a lot, but I thought, well, if I can't sing like Barbara Streisand and Funny Girl, then what's the point? I have been compared to Nina Swan from The Black Swan many times, and I'm not a, really a fan of that movie. Um, but, you know, I will say, I, I've seen it a couple times, and yeah, I mean, that was me, especially the part where she goes insane. I saw the romanticism of Hollywood as something that I had to strive for in order to be loved. That was where it was my became my greatest weakness. And it, it, it crippled my self-esteem, and it 
it caused me to be so afraid to do anything. I was so terrified of the world. And um, this was a major problem for me when I was a teenager and on and off for like, you know, 10 years, it was a serious issue. And you know, I'm not gonna get into the specifics of it really at this moment, but um, yeah, I mean, I just, I wasn't focusing on what was important. Instead, I was just so busy thinking about something that was unattainable. And I guess I could blame a lot of it on the beauty complex, but I also think for anybody, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, people that are just so in love with uh, stories, in love with make-believe, in a way that can be kind of toxic because most movies, especially in Hollywood, most movies have a very clear beginning, middle, and end. Even the really good ones. Some of them just have a very clear arc and a clear ending. Everything has closure. And in a way, when we watch movies like that, we want to see endings like that because it allows us to have that control. Because of that, we look at life that way. We look at everything in a way where uh, we look at it by staples, you know, graduation, marriage, children, um, you know, all of these different things we see as benchmarks in our lives uh, because we want that closure. We want to end one thing and begin a new thing. It's all very much based on narrative closure for that sense of control. But life is so messy and so much more complicated than that. And so when we get too fixated on these stories, in a way, the idea of having a full arc and ending, uh, beginning, middle, and end, creates our own unhappiness. But you know, we all grow up, and, and you know, once I started to experience a lot more of life, uh, I started to understand that there's so much more to art than just this this artifice, this superficiality that um, is so prevalent, especially in American culture, in the mainstream. So rather than focusing so much on the aesthetics of things. Um, I got much more interested in what was breaking from that typical story structure that we know so well and that glossy sheen that covers all of it up. I needed to learn to appreciate the things in my life because I had a lot to be grateful for that I was completely ignoring. And that's when I started rebelling. I mean, we all go through that at a certain point. Mine probably happened a little later uh, than a lot of people, but it was so liberating, uh, that feeling, and uh, it definitely reflected in my film choices. You know, I started watching a lot more experimental films. Things that raised questions rather than giving finite answers was what I wanted. So things that took me out of my comfort zone. And to this day, I'm much more interested in people, in art, in, in things that are, that rebel and challenge you to look underneath this uh, facade and show you something much more honest. And I know I talk about that a lot on here, but it, it's something that means a lot to me. And yeah, a lot of it does come from how I grew up and what I learned from that. There are so many beautiful things that people are doing artistically or otherwise um, that are so innovative and creative that we don't really uh, pay attention to that much, which is unfortunate. Um, but they're able to express something honest and vulnerable and what life is all about in some ways. We make art of our pain. We make art of our happiness. It's everything. It's never just cut and dry. And so I think that that's why we always have love-hate relationships with um, art because it exposes the vulnerability within us. And you asked me uh, what movies have changed my life. I can think of a, a handful, a good handful of them that have. But one that really uh, pertains to your question is, uh, as I said, I like really experience-driven films. Uh, but Mulholland Drive, I feel like, is one that I've been able to relate to maybe the most. The reason for that is because it, it precisely deals with uh, what I'm talking about. The Naomi Watts character um, is somebody who really wants that glamorous life. You know, she even says, uh, in the beginning of the movie, oh wow, you know, it's just like it was in the movies. I mean, she's just fixated on this, on, on the ideal, uh, rather than what's real. But as the film goes on, those layers start to peel away and uh, you start to realize that there's so much underneath that is so distorted and twisted that she doesn't understand. We start to see later on in the movie how it really twists her mind and it causes her downward spiral. And um, I, I certainly saw myself in that character and watching it multiple times, it's, it's a profound experience. So 
in my life there have been times that I've loved movies, times that I've kind of hated them, um, but it's always been an interesting part of my life and uh, it really reveals fundamentally who I am as a person and uh, it's certainly contributed to my failures but also a lot of my successes and I think a lot of people again can relate to that. I've been able to recognize my pains and build myself up uh, through uh, the unartistic means. It's always going to be an uphill battle, but that's life. That, I hope, answers your question pretty thoroughly. Thank you so much for asking it. And that's it. Uh, thank you all for listening. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, the link is below. And you can also like my Facebook page and the link below that. Catch you next time.